Hi guys. Today is March 21st and we're going to learn about logarithm properties today. So let me put the date on here, 321. And the question that we're going to have today is there's going to be three properties that we learned today. And one of them is this, what the heck does log base B of M plus log base B of N equivalent to, or what does it equal? Is there something that if whenever we see this, can we rewrite it a different way? And there actually there is, and we're going to show it in just a few minutes. Okay. So here we go. So what does this equal? Let's let, and this is basically a proof. I'm showing you a proof of what this is going to equal. So you just have to follow along and go, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So we're going to take log base B of M and we're going to let log base B of M, we're going to let that equal X. And we're also going to let log base B of N equal Y. So we're just calling this something else. We're going to call it X and this one we're going to call Y. Okay. So the next step is what we're going to do is we're going to exponentiate because we want to undo these logarithms. Okay. So we're going to exponentiate with the same base, which is base B. So we're going to take B and we're going to raise it to the log base B of M and that's equal to B raised to the X that's exponentiating. And when we do this, we're going to use the inverse properties of B raised to the log base B are going to undo each other and we'd be left with M. So this means that M must equal B to the X power. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this one. So we're going to exponentiate with base B. So B raised to the log base B of N is equal to B raised to the Y. B raised to the log base B of N, the B raised to the log base B, it undoes each other. So we're going to be left with N is equal to B to the Y power. Okay. So th that m means that M is, is exactly the same as B to the X and N is equal to B to the Y. So then we're going to look at something else. Okay. So B to the X, what does B to the X times B to the Y? What would that equal? Well, since B to the X is M, this and b to the y is n, this must be equivalent to m times n. So we're gonna write m times n, all right? Now this next one, b to the x times b to the y, these are the same bases. So there's exponent rules that we can use to write this as one base with, with an exponent. And so what this will become is b raised to the, so when you're multiplying same bases, you add the exponents. So this becomes B raised to the X plus Y power. And that must equal M times N. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna get rid of this B raised to the X plus Y, B raised to the X plus Y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take log base B of both sides. Cause if we do that, it stays and remains equal to each other. So we're going to take B, or sorry, not B, log base B of B raised to the X plus Y. As long as we do that to the, uh, to the right-hand side, so log base B of, and I'm going to use parentheses around this, M times N. Okay, on this left-hand side, log base B of B raised to the X plus Y. Again, inverse properties, right? These are going to undo each other. And you're going to be left with X plus Y. I'm going to slide this up a little bit. And that must equal, okay, log base B of M times N. But what is X and what is Y? Well, at the very beginning of this, if you look, we said that X was the same as log base B of M. So this X right here is the same as log base B of M. So we can do a replacement there. So this X becomes log base B of M and then plus, and this Y, well up here, Y was log base B of N. So this Y can be replaced with log base B of N, and that must equal this right-hand side, which is log base B 
of m times n. So what does this mean? Well, okay, what this means is when you're adding two logarithms with the same bases, we can write that as a single logarithm. And what the argument, these are called the arguments, the m and the n are called the arguments of this. We can just add these two together, or not add these two. When we're adding logarithms, we can just multiply the m and n together, okay? So something, an example of this would be something like this. If we had, these are just quick examples of this property. Actually, let's box this, because this is a really important property. This allows you to rewrite logarithms different ways. Okay, so a quick example on this is something like this, okay? So if we take log base three of five, and we add log base three of let's say some number seven, okay, we're adding the two logarithms and they have the same base. So that means this is, it must be equivalent to log base three of five times seven, or log base three of 35. Okay, so this is important in two ways, okay? So if we're adding two logarithms, we can rewrite as a single logarithm. But this also means that if we have a logarithm of a product, and we could rewrite 35 as five times seven, that means we could break it up into two logarithms. So we can go both ways with this. That's what the equals means. So another one is natural log of x plus five plus natural log of x minus two. This is another example of how we could use this property. Okay, we're adding. These two logarithms, remember these are logarithms and the base is E. And remember, we don't write the base E. We just, by writing ln, we know the base is E. Okay, so when we add these, we could rewrite this as the natural log of, and I'm going to use a bracket instead of parentheses, of the X plus 5 times the X minus 2. So X plus 5 times X minus 2. So a sum of two logarithms becomes a single logarithm and it's the product of the two things we're taking the log of. Now we could actually expand this and this would become even more. We could rewrite this as the natural log of, and if we multiply x plus five times x minus two, we would get x squared plus three x minus 10. So another property, okay, if you turn to the next page, is what is log base b of m minus log base b of n. So what is that equivalent to? What happens when we subtract them? So we just learned how what we do when we add them, but how about when we subtract them? It's kind of a similar argument, okay? We're gonna let log base b of m equal x again. And we're gonna let log base b of n equal y. And we're going to exponentiate both sides with base b. And we're going to do this in our heads this time, okay? So if we exponentiate this with base b, it becomes m is equal to b raised to the x power. And the same thing, if we exponentiate with both, with both sides with base b, this base b would ra raise to the log base b, would undo, and would be left with just the n. And then the right side would be b raised to the y power, okay? So this time I want to figure out, okay, so what happens if I take b to the x and divide it by b to the y? Okay, so what would this mean? Okay, so this would mean, <clears throat> excuse me, b to the x is m, so the numerator on this side becomes m over, and b to the y, b to the y is n, so that's n. And then on this left-hand side, we can use exponent rules because if you have b to the x over b to the y, what, what do we do? We subtract the exponents. So this left-hand side can be rewritten as b to the x minus y power, and that must be the same as m over n. And I bet you guys know what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take log base b of both sides. So log base b of b raised to the x minus y power 
is equal to log base B of M over N. Well, what happens when you take log base B of B to a power? Well, the log base B of B will undo each other and you're gonna be left with X minus Y is equal to log base B of M over N. But what is X? Back up to the top, X is log base B of M. So this means this gets replaced with log base B of M minus, and what's Y? Well, up here, Y is log base B of N, log base B of N. And so when, you, when you're subtracting two logarithms, you can rewrite it as a single logarithm of M over N. All right, so anytime you're subtracting two logarithms and they have the same base, they must have the same base for this to work, then we get a single logarithm with the same base. And the, the first logarithm, whatever we're taking it of, becomes the numerator. And the second logarithm, what we're taking the log of, becomes the denominator. And that's that one. And I forgot to say this earlier, but let's go ahead and box this, okay? Because that's an important property of logarithms, okay? Now let's move on to the next one, okay? Okay, for this next one, we are going to let log base B of M, log base B of M, not log base B of M to the X, okay? Just log base B of M. We're gonna let that equal Y, okay? Once again, we're gonna exponentiate both sides of this with base B. So B raised to the log base B of M would give us just M, and this right-hand side would be B to the Y power. Okay, and then whatever we do to one side, as long as we do the same exact thing to the other side, it will remain equal. Okay, so I wanna get this to be M to the X. So I'm gonna raise this to the X power, as, and as long as I raise this side to the X power, it will be, the two sides will be equal to each other. So this left-hand side is gonna be M raised to the X. So I'm raising this left-hand side to the X, as long as I raise the right-hand side to the X, so that's B to the Y, raise that to the X, this will remain equal. This left side and this right side will remain equal, all right? So this side, there's nothing we can do. This is just M to the X. This right-hand side, this is another exponent rule. B to the Y raised to the X. We're taking a base, raising it to power, and raising that whole thing to another power. What we do there is we multiply these exponents. And normally we'd write B raised to the Y times X, but I'm gonna, order doesn't matter when you multiply. So I'm gonna rewrite this as B, not raised to the Y times X, but X times Y. Okay. And then the very next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take log base B of both sides. So log base B of M raised to the X is equal to log base B of B raised to the X times Y power. Nothing happens on this left-hand side. They don't undo each other or anything. So we just have log base B of M to the X, and that's equal to, okay, so on this right-hand side though, we have log base B of B raised to a power. Well, log base B, they're gonna undo each other again. I really want you guys to know that, okay? So this becomes X times Y, right? Because these are gonna undo each other, okay? But, again, but, what the heck does X? Well, I don't know what X is. X is just X. X came from this, we're um, raising both sides to the X power here. That's where that came from. So what's Y? Is it, can we replace Y? Well, yeah. So this Y is the same as log base B of M. 
So what this means, and this is of the three properties, this is probably the most important one, is what this means is if we take log base B of M raised to the X power, it's equivalent to X times, and Y is log base B of M. Okay, so what this means is when you take just any logarithm, doesn't matter the base, any logarithm, okay, of something raised to a power, we can rewrite it as the power, that power right there, right, this X comes down in front, and we multiply by that power times log base B of whatever the base is here, okay? So let's box this. This is going to be the most important thing. Okay, so why is this so important? This is gonna allow us to solve exponential equations because when we have exponential equations, we have X up here in the exponent. And this is gonna allow us to bring it down and as a product and it won't be up in the exponent anymore, okay? So we're gonna do that um, in our next lesson is we're gonna, we're gonna use this property a lot to, to solve exponential equations, okay? So this is a really, really, I'm gonna put a little asterisk here. This is a really, really important one. Okay, guys? Okay, for this first example, this is gonna be expanding logarithm expressions. So we're gonna use the properties we just learned um, and we're gonna use more than one property. Okay, and I really want you to use, just use one property at a time, okay? Um, if you look at this, this is log of a to the six b squared. Now, there's no base here. What that means is when you see LOG from the other day, that means this is log base 10. So the base is 10. So when you don't see, when you see LOG, but you don't see the base, it automatically means 10. Okay, so you look at this and go, oh, that's a product. This is a to the sixth times b squared. Okay, so the property from the very first page that we did was that if you have a product, you could break that up into a sum of two logarithms or uh, if we have the sum, we can rewrite it as a product, okay? So this means that you could rewrite this as log of a to the sixth power plus log of b to the second power. Now, what property I used was this. I had log base b of m times n. I saw it like that. And then this is equivalent to log base b of m plus log base b of n. So I'm going to write the properties that we use because we're just learning them. I'm going to write the properties next to it when we see it. So that way you start to see it yourself. Okay. Maybe some of you already saw it and that's great. Okay. You wouldn't have to do this on homework. Okay. All right, so what's the next step we can do? Well, we have log base A raised to the sixth power. What can we do with that power? Well, the third property that we just learned was we can take that power and bring it down and multiply by it, okay? So this becomes six log, six times log of A plus, and then this right here, this one right here, okay? We have log of B squared the square can come down, we can multiply by it. So this becomes two log of B. And notice we don't have any more exponents. And that's what I mean by write your answer without exponents, okay? Now for both of these to go from here to here and from here to here, we actually use the same property and it was the one we just learned. If we have log base B of M raised to the X power, that can always be rewritten as X times log base B of M. And that right there is our final answer. Okay, for this next problem, we have log base two of Z times X squared over Y and raising that whole thing to the cube. Now there's a couple ways you can see this, okay? Um, I would encourage you to clean this up first, all right, before we start using any of our log properties. Let's use our exponential problems because there's a lot of our exponential properties because there is a lot of exponents here that's going on. We have a square and a cube and all that. Okay, so let's do that first. So this is equivalent to log base two of, okay, I would work inside out. So right here, we're squaring z times x. Well, what would that mean? That would mean we have to square the z and also square the x. So this becomes z squared times x squared 
over y raised to the third power. Okay. I'm going to come off to the right because we, because we still have quite a bit of room right here. Okay. So now what can we do with that third power? Okay. So if we take, if we have a fraction raised to the third power, we can raise this numerator to the third power and we can raise the denominator to the third power. Okay. So that would become log base two of, and it would be Z squared X squared cubed. over y cubed and i'm going to show every little thing step here okay you may skip a few steps in here okay okay so what does this mean okay so this one's done right here this is just y cubed you couldn't write any other way this can be cleaned up some more okay so if you have a product raised to a power you can take each one of these and raise it to the third power so this becomes log base two of z squared cubed and then x squared cubed over y cubed we're just using exponent rules all right so then that means this is equivalent to log base 2 of z and what do we do with our exponents we have z squared raised to the third we multiply these so that becomes z to the sixth x to the sixth all over y cubed. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, as a teacher, I'm gonna tell you, I like for people to do it um, a certain way on this, okay? And that is, um, I want you to always try to write these as products. It really saves you from making mistakes with order of operation because some of these are gonna turn into additions and subtractions. And if we just treat these as a product with like negative exponents, because this one's going to turn out to be a negative exponent, it will really protect you from um, making a mistake here. So um, you, we can look at this as, and I want you to understand this, this one could be rewritten as log base two of, okay, so this is z to the sixth times x to the sixth. So z to the sixth times x to the sixth times this is one over i'm going to treat this as one over y cubed okay now one over y cubed that could be rewritten with negative exponents okay so this is really y to the negative three we've been doing that a while too remember we did that a couple lessons ago okay so log base two of z to the sixth power times x to the sixth power times y to the negative three power. So if you always write these as products, I realize this is a quotient, but if you rewrite these as products, you will always get the right answer, okay? So what does it mean when we have a product of this times this times this? Well, that's just logarithm that we're adding together, right? So now we're gonna start using the logarithm properties. So up to this point, we're just using exponent rules, okay? So here we go. What does this mean? This means we could take log base two of z to the sixth power plus log base two of x to the sixth power plus log base two of y to the negative three power. Okay, so it's addition right now, right? Just addition. Okay, and what I used for this property was, I used that if I have log base b of m times n that's equivalent to log base b of m plus log base b of n and even if you have three or four or five of these okay it's it's always going to be when you're multiplying it's going to be the log of this plus the log of this plus the log of this okay all right so the next thing what can we do all right so we can use the property that if you take in the log of something raised to a power, we can bring that power down and multiply by it. Okay. So then this one becomes this first term right here becomes log. Oh, not log. And I don't have my white out. So just a, okay. I got my white out. 
Okay. So back to this. Okay. So we have log base two of Z to the six. We can rewrite that as six times log base two of Z and this six we can bring down. So plus six log base two of X and this one we can bring down as a negative three. So it's going to be adding a negative three. Well, adding a negative three is the same as subtracting three log base two of y. Okay. Any, well, you guys can't really ask questions. Huh? That's what we need to do these zoom. So we you guys can ask questions if you have any. Okay. And what we did right here, the property that I used was on all three of them was log base B of M to the X is equal to X times log base B of M. Okay, all right, and that's that problem. Okay, for this next problem, we're gonna be doing actually the reverse. We're gonna be condensing lo the logarithm expression. So we're gonna rewrite this um, as one single logarithm, okay? And again, I do these a little bit differently than other teachers just from the experience of 27 years of teaching, okay? Um, you can, if when you're doing this one's pretty straightforward, but this next one, you the part B, if you guys can see it, okay, you can um, really get the order of operation mixed up and then wind up getting with the wrong answer, okay? So what I wanna do is look at this, okay, and you see I'm multiplying this natural log by four. Well, where did that come from? That came from an exponent of four, okay? And this one right here, you can think of, I know it's a two and you're subtracting, okay? But I would rather you think of this as being a negative two that we could bring up as a negative two exponent, okay? All right, and then that's gonna change this to addition, okay? So really, I'm looking at it like this. This is equal to four natural log of x plus a negative two natural log of y. That's how I'm looking at it, okay? So now I can see, oh, all right, this is gonna come up as an exponent for the X. So this is natural log of X to the fourth power, and then plus, and this is gonna come up as a negative two exponent. So plus the natural log of Y to the negative two power, okay? And what we used here to go from this step to this step is, we use that if we have x times log base b of m, that's equivalent to log base b of m to the x. They go both ways, okay? So we're starting from here and going and rewriting it like this. Okay, so now I'm adding, right? So when if I have two logarithms that I'm adding, that I could bring those together as a single logarithm and it's a product of the two things that I'm taking the log of. So this becomes the natural log of x to the fourth times y to the negative two power, all right? Now, what is y to the negative two power, okay? Actually, I should put the property here. So the property I used here was I had log base b of m, and I was adding log base b of n, and I brought those together as just a single logarithm, log base b of m times n. That's the property I used, okay? Now it's just gonna matter of, I, want, I, want, I also want you to rewrite these without any negative exponents, okay? So what is y to the negative two, okay? So this is the natural log of x to the fourth times one over y squared. Okay, and then when you multiply x to the fourth times one over y to the fourth, that would give you the natural log of x to the fourth over y squared. Okay, now some of you might be thinking, well, Mr. Mitchell, you could have just brought up the exponents. You could have brought up this four and brought up the two and have natural log of x to the fourth minus the natural log of y squared. And because you're subtracting, you could rewrite it as a quotient like that, it was that second property I taught you. And I would say, yes, you're absolutely right.
but that's easy when you have just two things, two logarithms. But when you come down here to the next problem and you start looking at multiple things, it makes it much, much more difficult. And I've seen over years and years and years that when you have more than two logarithms, people tend to make mistakes because they don't quite see the subtraction right. They don't really understand order of operation like they should. Okay. And this doing it this way really helps. I know it's a few more steps um, than just going, just raising up the powers, but I really, really want to encourage you really, really encourage you to do this the way I showed you because you wind up getting the right answers. Okay. And that's why. Okay. And next go to the next problem. Okay. So for this next problem, what I want you to look this, look, look at this as is this is 18 times the natural log of X plus negative three times the natural log of y plus negative three, the natural log of z. And so now we can use a property where, okay, we're taking a logarithm, we're multiplying it by a number, so we can bring that number up as an exponent. So this is equal to the natural log of x to the 18th power plus the natural log of y to the negative three power plus the natural log of z to the negative three power. And because I'm adding these three logarithms, I can rewrite that as a product. And so this is equivalent to a single logarithm, which would be the natural log of x to the 18th times y to the negative three times z to the negative three. And then it's just going to use these negative exponents. Okay, so what does y to the negative 3 mean? That's 1 over y cubed. What is z to the negative 3? 1 over z cubed. So this becomes the natural log of x to the 18th times 1 over y cubed times 1 over z cubed. And when I multiply these three together, I would get a single logarithm, the natural log of x to the 18th over y cubed, z cubed. And that's the correct answer to this, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the assignment sheet and I hope you're enjoying this. I wish I was in front of you guys though so much. I like to see you guys' faces. Okay, so on our assignment sheet, okay, we did logarithm properties and it's the worksheet ELF4. And we did that on 321. Um, this isn't going to match up to the due dates at all, okay? Um, just check your Google Classroom to make sure um, when the due dates are, okay? Um, and I'm going to try to do, I, I sent out that um, form today, that survey of um, if you'd like a question and answer session on Zoom. And it looks like a lot of you guys would like that. So um, I'll probably be scheduling that the next week or so. And um, I'll let you know when, when that's going to happen. Okay. And I'd like to maybe do that maybe either two or three times a week, um, depending on the, it looks like you guys wanted it to be in the afternoon or the evening. So um, we'll take a look and then we can see each other. Okay. <laughs> All right. Take care guys. Bye.